Uh, by definition, Jesus was a Muslim. Of course. Jesus served God. He, he did. He, he did submitted himself. Submitted to God. He, he put his head to the floor like a Muslim. When they go to Matthew 26, 39, they say, see, Jesus is Muslim. He prayed like a Muslim. So now you're going to have to read for me Matthew 26, 39. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That's it. Take Shahada right now, guys. Take Shahada because Jesus fell to the ground, fell prostrate and prayed. He's a Muslim because that's what Muslims do. La, 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 la. Muhammad, la, 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 la. La, la, la. Anyway, say thank you for proving to me that Muhammad is an antichrist and that he's a false prophet. What do you mean? Because notice who Jesus prayed to. My father. My father. But according to the Quran, Allah is a father to no one. He has no offspring. He has no spiritual children. And Jesus isn't a son. So how are you telling me Jesus is praying like a Muslim when he prays to his father, Oh, my father. That's number one. When you do not pray to Allah and call him my father. So this means Muhammad is a false prophet. Your religion is a false religion and Allah is a false God. So thank you for bearing the Quran. Secondly, you're quoting a passage from the context in which Jesus is is going to be betrayed, handed over to beaten, to be beaten, whipped, and killed, buried, and then be raised on the third day to never die again. How are you quoting a chapter from my Bible that proves Jesus will be killed by crucifixion, then be raised on the third day, raising his physical body, making it immortal, forever existing in flesh as the divine son of God in the flesh, and he's going to ascend in that physical body into heaven, to sit at the Father's right hand and reign as Lord. you got to be kidding me, right? Okay, so that's one. Now, what about Mark 3.35? How do we turn that against Muslims? Because he does say, whoever does the will of God, that's my brother, my sister, my mother. Read Mark 3.35. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and my sister and mother. Oh, so wait, that's Islam because Islam means... Do the will of Allah. Submit to the will of Allah. And Jesus says, do the will of God. Then you are my brother. Then you are my sister. Then you are my mother. Now, side note. Guys, did you notice what Jesus did not include? He said, if you do the will of God, then you are my brothers, my sisters, my mothers. But he didn't say you are my fathers. Did you notice what he didn't mention in that list? How come he didn't say my father? Because one is his father, God. You can be a brother to our Lord Jesus. You can be a mother to our Lord Jesus. You can be a sister to our Lord Jesus, but you can't be the father of our Lord Jesus because only one is his father, God Almighty. But hold on. Jesus says, do the will of God. That's Islam. Islam means submission to the will of God. But hold on, brethren. Same gospel of Mark. Let us see what the will of God is. You ready, Albi? Mark 9, verse 7. What is the will of God? Mark 9, verse 7. And the cloud came and overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. Oh, so the will of God is to hear and obey the son whom he loves, Jesus Christ. So what is the will of God? Mark 9, 7, God appears in a pillar of cloud. The apostles see that cloud visibly, and then they hear God speak audibly. And he says to Peter, James, and John, this is my son whom I love. Jesus is my son whom I love, Muhammad. Hear him. So the will of God is to obey and listen and follow the beloved son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord. But wait, Allah of the Quran says, Isa is not a son. Chapter 9, verse 30. That means Allah of the Quran stands condemned by God as being Satan, Muhammad's father. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. What about James, though? They also quote James, Albi. Because remember, Islam means to submit. And in the book of James, it says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. James 4, 7, 8. And you can read it for me, sir, because your voice is a little bit better than mine, especially when you're sleeping. <laughs> James 4, 7, 8. Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. So wait, is Islam meaning submit to God? That's what it means, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And James, Yaakov, Yaakov said, submit to God and resist the devil and then he will flee. That's Islam. La, 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 brother. Hey, brother Tim, why don't you take the name Abdurrahman and I'll take the name Ubaidullah and we can say Shahada. La, 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 la. All right. But hold on. The same book of James. Same book of James. Who is this God that you submit to? Go to James 1 verse 1, sir. 
James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. A stuck for a law gets stuck for a law. The same book of James says that he is the slave of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet Jesus is not on earth. He's in heaven. So James saying, there are two in heaven that are my Lord. And there are two in heaven whom I serve and slave for. I am the slave of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So James just affirmed, there are two persons in heaven that rule as Lord. And he's the slave of two persons in heaven, God and the Lord Jesus Christ. But Islam says, that you are to be the slave of Allah alone, and you have only one Rab, one Lord in heaven. But James says, God and the Lord Jesus Christ, both of them are Rab, Lord, over the earth, and I'm the slave of both. This is Islam. What about James 2, verse 1? James 2, verse 1. My brother, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, <sighs> So James in James 2, 1 says, Jesus Christ is our Lord, our Rab. The Arabic word for Lord is Rab. In the Greek, it's Kyrios. According to Islam, there's only one Rab. El Rab, Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. There's only one. That's Allah. James says, Jesus is our Lord and he's the glory. 